It's a question I get all the time. How do I buy good wines at the store? Well, fret no more because today we're breaking it down. Let's start with my most important and also most controversial piece of wine buying advice. Stop buying wines from the grocery store. I know, I know, I'm challenging the status quo here, but let me explain. Number one, big grocery stores have to buy wines that they can stock in every single one of their hundreds or thousands of stores. This means they have to buy wines that are mass produced. But wine isn't a commodity like computers or plastic thingamajigs, it's a crop. So as production goes up, quality tends to decrease and corners get cut in order to fill the shelves at these stores. In America in particular, mass produced wines have all sorts of additives, which by the way, don't have to be listed on the label. Some additives aren't so bad, but some, like Mega Purple, which can be found in cheap wines, are. Number two, while it may look like there's a lot of options at the grocery store, most of these wines are actually owned by about two or three wine conglomerates. Number three, storage. This one's a no-brainer since you can actually see that wines in grocery stores are stored about as well as the two liter of warm soda they stand right next to. And finally, number four, most wines in grocery stores are ubiquitous and, well, boring. They're purposely made that way so they'll be unoffensive to the general masses. A simple solution to all of this, a small independent wine shop like this one. This is Juice at 1340, an amazing local wine shop in Chicago owned by my friend Derek C. Westbrook, who used to be a Psalm at some of the city's finest restaurants. There's a full interview with him about why buying small is important in our Chicago episode, which is coming out July 2022, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. But for now, let's head to part two of how to buy wine. Another solid, accessible option is a medium-sized store that specializes in wine and spirits. This is Binnie's, a local family-owned store with about 44 locations. These stores offer a few things that smaller wine shops can't. Number one, bigger store means bigger selection. So if you're looking for something specific, you're more likely to find it here. And with that larger selection comes versatility. Whether you want a $15 weeknight wine or a $100 special occasion wine, there's more options for both your budget and palate. Number two, because the store specializes in wine, you're still getting professionally certified staff okay. who know wine and do tastings, trainings, and seminars regularly on the wines. And number three, because they're purchasing for a few dozen stores, they have strong relationships with producers and importers, and they can usually offer some of the best prices. Your first line of defense at a wine shop is the staff. Finding someone who can actually help you who has actually tasted the wines. Most people at wine shops love wine, it's why they work there. Just be sure to share a few important pieces of info with them. Number one, the grapes and the places you normally drink. Both of those things, not just one. Number two, if you're pairing the wine with something. Number three, how much you're looking to spend. And number four, always mention if you're willing to try something new or off the beaten path, hmm. which by the way, I highly recommend doing. It'll allow them to find you something fun and of better value. Let's switch it up and say you're buying wine out on your own with nobody to help you. Buckle up because here are my 10 tips. Number one, figure out how the store is laid out. It's usually by place or by grape or a combination of the two, but I've also seen wine shops organized by price, by body or by style. Number two, ignore awards and scores. Only bigger wineries have the money to enter these competitions and scores are completely subjective anyway. Number three, ignore labels. There's nothing wrong with having a cool wine label, but some of the best wines in the world are in plain clothes, as they say. On a similar note, number four, ignore the wine descriptions on the bottle. The descriptions on the back of the bottle are meant to sell wine and consequently not offend anyone. So many wines tend to have boring generic descriptors like smooth and dark, Ooh. taken with a grain of salt, but some descriptors will clue you into the style of wine. Toast and vanilla mean oak influence, rich, luscious, and dark mean big warm climate wines, whereas bright, zesty, crisp mean cool climate wines. Number five. There is a sweet spot on price, in my opinion, that gets you a good, high quality, complex representation of most wines on the planet, and it's the $15 to $30 range. Sweet. Some famed wine regions are gonna cost more, which leads me to my next point, number six. As the Thai people say, same, same, but different. 
You're not gonna find Champagne or Napa Cabernet or Barolo for around $30, but you will find Cava made in the Champagne method, Chilean Cabernet, and Longue Nebbiolo for $30. What a deal! So don't be afraid to Google something like Champagne Alternatives if you have your heart set on something that's out of your budget. Number seven, get specific. The smaller, more specific the area is that you're buying, the more likely it is to have quality and yield controls in place. So don't buy California wine, buy Sonoma wine. Better yet, buy Russian River or Alexander Valley wine, which are specific places in Sonoma. Don't buy French wine, buy Bordeaux, or better yet, Santa Million, which is a specific place in Bordeaux. Number eight, pay attention to ABV or alcohol content. This is your best indication of the style of wine you're getting. And number nine, when in doubt, Spain, Portugal, South America, New Zealand, and Australia all have tremendous bang for your buck. And finally, number 10, don't stress too hard. Part of the fun for me anyway, is picking a bottle and then busting it open at home to see how right or wrong I was. In 2021, poorly produced wine that makes it all the way to commercial shelves is almost non-existent. So enjoy the fun that is picking out bottles, knowing that good or bad, your next bottle is right around the corner. Questions on how to buy wine? Put it in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you soon.